Es ist heiß hier drin. Das liegt aber nicht nur daran, dass unsere Klimaanlage vielleicht nicht so ganz auf äh, Lautstärke spielt, sondern dass Mandy hier bei uns zu Gast ist und äh, richtig coole, heiße Musik spielt. Uh, July, thank you so much for being here today. And I love the song July. Millions of other people do as well. It seems to be like the, the Irish national anthem. Um, yeah, well, it's a, it's a song about the summer and sometimes we have a hit and miss situation. We, we, you know, it rains a lot in Ireland, so people, it kind of romanticizes what, what <laughs> summer should be like at home. But it's been better this year, right? Yeah, although, you know, um, it's funny, I, every July I, um, I hear the song on the radio and um, somehow it starts raining and uh, they play it more, actually, because it just, it, uh, it's, it's like the perfect day, you know. Um, the perfect day. What is the perfect day for you now, after being in the business for over 20 years? Perfect day for me is uh, playing a concert uh, that's full, mm -hmm. and um, and really, what's perfect is when people sing my songs back to me. There is no feeling like that, you know. You um, you write a song in, in in your bedroom or somewhere like that, and then you take it to the stage or you, you release an album. And when usually it's about six months to a year after the album comes out that people have listened to it, mm -hmm. and it's the best feeling ever to have people chanting your song back to you. It's awesome. Does it is it humbling sometimes when you go to different countries and they don't know you as well as they do in Ireland? Yeah, it's it's uh, it is a bit. You know, I uh, played the other night at the acoustic festival and. July at home, or say Galway Girl, or even my song To You I Bestow from a long time ago. Um, the reaction wasn't as big, but but halfway during it, when they got the energy, uh, I really felt um, the enthusiasm. So, but it you know you can't expect everybody to know your music everywhere you go, you know. Absolutely not. And it's a challenge too to to kind of um, win win people over. Also in Irland ist er wirklich ein, ein Riesenstar, da, er spielt vor Hunderttausenden von Menschen und die Leute kennen seine Texte und hat jetzt am Wochenende in, in Düsseldorf gespielt beim Acoustic Summer Festival und da war das erste Mal so, dass er wieder gemerkt hat, er muss die Leute erstmal davon begeistern und äh, das hat auch geklappt. Um, you just said uh, to the I Bestow, um, uh, a song that came out in 1996, which was a song that you wrote for the soundtrack for um, uh, Romeo and Juliet. That's right, yeah. Um, it was on uh, the album Jelly Legs, um, yes. which you brought out with the record company Epic. Yeah. Um, it was a huge success. Yeah. And then, for some reason, Epic dropped you yeah. at two, th two uh, four years later, and you had to uh, think of something new to do. How was that back then? Was it kind of like, wait a second, I'm a, I'm a big star now, and why don't you want to hear my music anymore? It was a strange one because um, I, I remember I was one of about 60 or 70 bands. I, in fact, there could have been more mm -hmm. that got dropped at the same time. The accountant said to them, you know, you've got a lot of bands there, and they're eating up a lot of the budget, and uh, maybe it's best to kind of you know, do a uh, clean out. And I was part of that, but the funny thing was, um, that song July was on, uh, was made, I made it for, the, for, for my second record for Epic. And uh, I ended up putting it out myself and it was a, a really, really successful uh, uh, song for me. But um, a lot of bands, um, started going, the acoustic music got very popular, you know, so uh, they missed out on that one, you know. And you can never you can never tell what's coming up next as a trend, but yeah, um, you know, it was a massive success and I, I was very happy, you know. Are you happy now that you got dropped? I and mean, was it good because you it kind of could do your own, your own thing now all the time? Uh, for a long time it was a good one because um, the independence having, you know, as they say, not having so many chefs in the kitchen, um, I found that when I was making music uh, under the record label, people were coming in and out and saying, turn that up, turn that mm. down, and it got a bit, little bit smooth, you know? Um, but now I think I understand it more. I'm older, I'm wiser, and I think that um, I would uh, understand a record deal a little bit. I didn't really appreciate it when I was so young. I was only 20 when it happened. So um, they have the bigger wingspan so when you're on your own, you're kind of, it's like selling cakes to the locals, you know. <laughs> but it worked pretty well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there was a lot of cakes being eaten at Absolutely. the time. <laughs> also, I had uh, some soundtrack from Romeo and Juliet, damals der Film von Bas Lerman uh, mit Claire Danes and Leonardo DiCaprio, einen Song geschrieben. Um, und das war ein Riesenhit und ist aber dann vier Jahre später von der Plattenfirma um, quasi uh, gefeuert worden und hat aber seine eigene Plattenfirma gegründet, Camcore, und hat da auch auf dem ersten Album July rausgebracht, was er vorher hier gespielt hat. Das war ein Riesenhit, also es war ganz gut, dass es damals so passiert ist. Um, in the meantime, you uh, play in uh, the Glastonbury Festival. Um, mm. You've played at the White House. Uh, yeah. For which president? Uh, president Obama. So that was a good choice. Yeah. Would yeah. you have played for other presidents of the, in America? I'm not sure. No, there's <laughs> the, the, I wasn't a fan of um, obviously uh, President Bush. But um, for me, playing in the White House was not about what president it was. It was more about representing my country uh, in America. And we've, as you know, Irish people have been in it. We've helped build America, you know, and um, 
So it was basically the Irish people were giving the shamrock, you know, back to as a, as a, as a token of good gesture. So it was like nearly a tribal thing. So it didn't really matter. Um, I wasn't specifically playing, although President Obama was there, I wasn't there to kind of... Um, for him especially, and for my Bo country. I'm from Boston, so I know what the Irish people have, have done for, for America. There's yeah. a lot of Irish people in, in Boston. Yeah. Um, you also played in the Royal Albert Hall, but like for example, next week you have a gig and you're going to be playing in front of 45 people. Mm. Um, it's a small, small special gig. Mm. Do you enjoy doing that and having kind of, you know, coming back to the roots and, and having people that you look, you can look in each face and say, I'm playing for you? Yeah. Um, I, it, I, in fact, the smaller gigs are sometimes the more uh, intimidating. I mean, Playing to one person is probably the hardest. I can imagine. You know, it's like kind of, you know, because you don't have anywhere to look or whatever. But um, um, it's all, you can never tell. It's a, Music is a strange thing. Um, you can never tell if it's going to be, if the big audience is going to be, you know, easier or di more difficult. But uh, it, that's what makes it so... Um, Exciting. Absolutely. You know. It's a, a wonderful album you have that you brought here. Das ihr hier sehen könnt, das ist das Album von Ihnen, das aktuelle. Und there's a song on it called Beaconette that you'll be playing in yeah. a couple of minutes. Um, it's, is it for your wife, Sarah, or is, it, is there a different story behind that? Um, it's, I mean, I write a lot of songs, uh, but this one kind of came out in a dreamlike -like state. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like, I say like a ghost love song. It's, um, I let my mind, when I was writing the song, I let my mind just uh, relax and... Uh, some of the lyrics are a little bit kind of um, subconscious, I suppose. Mm -hmm. uh, but it is a love song, I guess, for my wife. Um, we were in, in Barcelona and we stayed in a spooky hotel. And uh, she, I, I felt like she was my angel, my beacon, mm -hmm. my light. And I, I put et on it as a female beaconette. You know. So when you have had a huge fight with her, which does happen in good marriages. We um, never fight. But if you do, and then you have a concert and you have to play the song, do you think, oh, I don't really want to sing it because I... You know, but people want to hear it. <laughs> there's one, there's one song on the album called Sarah of the Slopes. Mm -hmm. uh, I met her in Austria, um, uh, and um, I just imagine this lady coming over the hills uh, like, a, like, a, you know, like a star, you know. But um, she said to me one time, you know, by the way, I, you're not allowed to play that song anymore. <laughs> you know, so, uh, so there, but, but everything's good. It's yeah. just something. And I have a song called The Dog House on the, on the, on the, <laughs> on the album, so it's all very domestic. Aha, uh aha, -huh, uh -huh, very interesting. Yeah. It's great having you here today. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, you're going to be playing Beaconette in a couple of minutes. Yeah. Ihr könnt auf jeden Fall weitere Informationen über ihn bekommen auf seiner Seite money.ie, also für Irland, das ist aber verlinkt auf uns, bei uns auf der Seite. Und da gibt es etliche Videos, die man sich angucken kann. Wir schauen jetzt erstmal rein in einen Cover-Song von Simon and Garfunkel, heißt Cat. Kathy's song ist ein wunderbarer Song und äh, er wird gleich live bei uns spielen. Erstmal für euch Kathy's Song, gesungen von Mandy und gleich bei uns auf der Showbühne. Thank you so much. You're welcome.